Okay, hey Jean, I think we are live and recording this session. Uh, my name is Chris Rolf, I'm the founder of Boulder SEO Marketing. Uh, today I have with me uh, Jean Ginsberg, uh, your fellow digital marketing expert. We connected, boy, it's probably like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, and Jean, you have published this book. I hope uh, our audience can see it. It's called Win New Customers. How to attract, connect, and convert more prospects into customers in 60 days using digital marketing strategies. That is very cool. Jean, thank you so much for actually sending me a signed copy. Mm -hmm. I read the book. Uh, it's, it's great. I love it. Uh, overall, before I let you introduce yourself, uh, I think you help people get organized with um, you know the content that you're sharing, the templates and everything. That said, Jean, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Uh, tell me real quick about your company and then I have a few uh, questions for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the show. This is very exciting. And yeah, we connected a couple years ago with Chris in the Denver area. And um, I, a little bit about me. So I've been doing digital marketing for 11 years now. Uh, five of the last 11 years I've been on my own. Um, and I founded a digital marketing agency and consultancy. Uh, it's called Ginball Digital Marketing. I also founded um, another website called GeneGinsberg.com. So I have a couple of companies and both of them. We strive to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses using digital marketing strategies. And uh, about six months ago or so, I published a book called Win New Customers. And it basically is a, um, just the entire process that I've been using for the most part uh, with my private clients that I decided, hey, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to keep it all in my head. Um, I think I want to share this with uh, entrepreneurs, startups, uh, businesses out there who would want to use digital marketing to grow their uh, companies. So that was basically the catalyst of why I decided to write the book because I felt like uh, it could be so helpful for other people, other businesses, other entrepreneurs out there. Yeah, I think you and I share a similar passion. Like we, I, I teach a lot of classes here in the Boulder and Denver area. And you know, this stuff is not rocket science. You just need to know what you need to know and how to apply it, how to get organized. So I think this book is actually doing a great job. Uh, it's, 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 uh, you know, you can read it in maybe two or three days. That's what I did. And has a lot of templates, links to templates, etc. Um, with that said, uh, a big part of the book is, you know, ad identifying target markets. Uh, Jean, how do I find my ideal target market? That's a very good question. And I have to say that it is really the foundation for any marketing, digital marketing, any marketing. Well, in this case, we're going to use talk about digital marketing for the most part. But um, without understanding who your ideal target market is, who you're trying to get your message across to, um, you, it, it's going to be pretty ineffective. So unless you start there, um, any business, any company, doesn't matter what you do, who you are, what your business is, unless you start there, um, it's, uh, your marketing is not going to work. So uh, really understanding where, what your customers are, what their pain points are, what their challenges are, is going to get you to where you need to be so that when you're actually creating Facebook ads, or retargeting ads, then um, it's speaking to the customers um, that you're trying to connect with or the prospects you're trying to connect with. And I'm actually going to share my screen here. Um, I'm going um, to use the customer avatar worksheet. This is actually a worksheet that's not mine. Um, it is by Digital Marketer, but I felt like it's a pretty good worksheet, um, and it really gets the point across in terms of what are, we things, what, are, what are the things that we need to know as business owners about our target market. So um, uh, starting in the beginning, there's the demo I kind of split it into three different areas. So um, your demographic area, so this is like age and gender and marital status, so kind of the basics of narrowing down your market. Then we get into goals and values and challenges and pain points, which I, in my opinion is like level three, sorry, level two of, of your target market. And then level three is where are they hanging out, like what is their source of information. So. Um, I think this is a good worksheet. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, and I use that with um, my private clients because I think uh, this is a good way to get started with your target market. So the first, uh, we'll start in the beginning, age, gender, marital status, things like that, geolocation. So 
pretty standard, pretty simple things that we want to first narrow things down first before we um, before we get into level two, which is goals and values. So because when you're doing Facebook advertising, for example, targeting is going to be a big piece of it, and um, we don't want to, of course, be getting our message across to everybody. We want to be niching down to a specific demographic. So first we start off with level one, just age and location and things like that. Then we get into goals and values, challenges and pain points. So really um, one of the main things that I really look, look into when I uh, connect with customers or my group coaching program is um, what is what are the challenges and pain points of our target market? So what is uh, what is their problem? Um, what are what are the pain points that they're trying that we're trying to identify? And how does our product or service help to solve those challenges and pain points for them? So we kind of want to think about it as a before and after, right? So before they were you know they didn't know digital marketing, um, they didn't they weren't growing their business. After they engaged with me. They, um, as a digital marketing expert, they, you know, their business started to grow. So think about it as before and after. Um, and then level three is going to be sources of information. Where are they hanging out? So um, kind of breaking it down from a, a generational piece, you know, we want to maybe look at if you're, if you're targeting a younger generation, we want to maybe look at Snapchat and Instagram. If you're looking more at millennials, we want to look at Facebook. Um, so that's kind of breaking it down more, you know, on a generational piece. But also we want to look at sources of information. So are they looking at certain blogs, websites? Are they going to conferences? Are they following certain gurus? So these are all going to be important pieces, um, especially when you're doing your Facebook advertising because you can target users who, for example, like a certain guru, let's say like Gary Vaynerchuk or go to a specific conference or read a certain blog. So, um, so that is um, the ideal target market. And I talk about it quite a bit in the book. And I've used this worksheet um, that you guys can see here as a way to first identify before we even, you know, identify who our, our target market is before we even get into marketing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually a huge part of my trainings that I do. Uh, and you'd be shocked. I mean, well, no, wouldn't be shocked. No, I wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, all right, well, talking about social media, you mentioned Facebook before, et cetera. You know, love it or hate it, uh, it's, it's part of the digital marketing strategy. Um, what is the best content to use on social media nowadays? I would say, you know, I'm actually going to show a, my, my feed, my Facebook feed. And if you look at it and if you look at your Facebook feed, at least in mine, um, everything that's showing up is going to be, for the most part, video. So, and I have... Um, been using a lot of video for my um, content lately, and I think that's just really the best way to um, to get your target market to engage with you more. Because if you're on video, especially if you're doing like face to camera, kind of similar to what we're doing now, um, it's just uh, the the target your target market can really identify you more than they can via an image or just uh, audio or or you know just uh, copy. So there's definitely a lot of like unsaid things that go through the process of you know do I want to engage with this person further when you're on video. So I highly recommend um, using video as part of your Facebook advertising or any advertising if it does allow video. So things like Instagram. Um, but um, in addition to video, I think that's a good way to what we call at the top of the funnel. So if you're just trying to get awareness um, to your brand, awareness to your page, awareness to you know who you are um, and what your company does, you know top of the funnel content marketing, I think video works really great. If you're trying to get people down to the bottom, you know of the funnel or the mid funnel, things like case studies or uh, white papers or maybe additional content that's more in depth um, is really the way to go, and maybe additional longer videos. So for example, the top of the funnel might be just a short explainer video. The middle of the funnel might be a longer video that talks, you know, more specifically about a topic, and then at the bottom of the funnel maybe a case study. So you have to think about like where we're seeing, uh, where our users are seeing or our prospects are seeing our content, and how we want to, you know, address that even further as we get to the bottom of the funnel. Makes sense. It's really about the right content for the right person at the yes at the right time. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so now we're posting content on social media. There's a lot of noise out there. Um, sometimes it seems unorganized. How do you? What's the best way to get organized with content on social media? Yeah, that's a very good question, um, and I get that asked a lot by 
by my consulting clients um, because you know I might say hey you know you need to start posting on social media but it just seems kind of so um, or disorganized and so you know um, like I guess nebulous the to them <laughs> right a lot of people yeah. are shooting from the hip it's just exactly they don't have to post they do something and yeah and so one of the things that I always say and uh, which I think is absolutely true is that you have to be consistent so if you're gonna start doing social media whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn whatever it might be you have to be consistent so you have to be consistently posting because um, if you're not then you're not really top of mind to your prospects um, so creating a um, a content, a social media content calendar is going to be the best strategy in my opinion and, and this has actually helped me quite a bit in my business. So I've been creating content for the last couple of years and before it was kind of haphazard on how I posted it but now um, I have a team who helps me with this and here uh, this is actually the, uh, the, the spreadsheet that I have used um, that's also in the book so if you have the book you can see the spreadsheet but I'm going to show a screen share of it but basically it's a social media content calendar and it makes your life so much easier your teams uh, team members lives so much easier when they're posting social media content because in that case you can get everything organized ahead of time instead of just haphazardly posting you know whenever you create a piece of content um, so in this case um, I have a couple of columns that I use um, and it makes just things so much easier when you're actually getting started. So I have the name of the post, so you know whatever it might be. My let's say you know, we're doing this particular video that's going to be the example. So um, digital marketing and how to use social media in digital marketing. So that's the name of the post. Then the post copy. So what do I want to say? Like a couple sentences about what we talked about today. So today we talked about your ideal target market and you know how to use social media in your digital marketing strategy. Then you're going to put dates for the the platforms that you want to post to. So for example, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. And then if you have a Dropbox link, which I use Dropbox for all my videos, that's where I store all my videos so that my team can have access to them. So they can just upload the video from Dropbox to let's say LinkedIn or to Facebook. And then also my YouTube link in case I want to use YouTube. And then any other links, for example, to images or things like that that I might want to include. So this is, um, an example of one um, and this is actually my social media post this is, this, is the, this is the platform that I use the Google sheet that I use so as you can see here are all of my posts my Dropbox links my Dropbox links images Canva photos so this is how I this is how my team and I stay organized when it comes to posting content onto social media and you know that's a uh, it, it may look pretty involved and a lot of bits and pieces but we use a very similar uh, template and it works amazingly yeah. well. It's just like you know you have to get started and then it gets easier and easier and easier and these Absolutely. templates are super helpful. Um, Alright so we spoke about uh, Facebook. Um, Let's switch over to the paid side of things. Uh, how do we use Facebook ads to bring in more sales? Does it work? Yes, I, I believe it works, and I know that you do a lot of SEO, and absolutely SEO is another strategy. And you know, the way I think about it is that all of these strategies, not not one strategy is going to be is going to work, you know, 100% for your business. So different strategies are going to bring in different types of customers or different numbers of customers. So SEO is one strategy, but then paid media is another strategy, and I've used that quite a bit with my uh, private clients. And I'm just going to share my screen again, and um, I put together this little presentation um, that talks about uh, uh, social media, and, and we talked about social media, of course, on, you know, here today, but why I think social media works so well and why paid advertising works so well. So. Um, in terms of social media, um, one of the, I, I found some statistics about Facebook and Instagram. So in terms of um, Facebook, so right now um, there's over 2 billion users on Facebook worldwide and then 240 million users just in the U.S. So if you think about the population of the United States, there's 300 million people here, 240 million of them are users on, on Facebook. So, you know, I talked earlier about ideal target market, where are they hanging out? Well, they're probably hanging out on social media and so here are just some statistics about Instagram also 140 million users on Instagram so if you think about half a million uh, sorry half of the population of the United States uh, which is 300 million half of them approximately are using Instagram so 
Um, to me, it seems that you know every everybody's using social media, everybody's on their mobile device. And one of um, my gurus that I follow, and I'm sure you probably know Gary Vaynerchuk, one of the things uh, he just recently spoke about is the next 12 to 18 months are going to be all about Facebook and Instagram when it comes to paid media or it comes to social media. So absolutely um, use Facebook as a strategy for my clients and for my own business. I post a lot to Facebook all the time. And just to kind of give you some examples of um, that I think were good ad examples for um, different brands that I found. So for example, um, Lewis Howe is the one on, on the left hand side um, talking about um, you know a free live event. Um, some of the things that I want to point out about Facebook advertising. So we want to, of course, have a good headline, something that's eye-catching. So, for example, in this case, you know, a free live event in the middle, um, shop, boom, you know, makeup for women over 40. So these are things that are going to draw your audiences in. And then for the copy, um, if you look um, on the top section of the um, ad examples, we want to, um, depending, of course, on where your where these ads are, are they top of the funnel or middle of the funnel. You know, top of the funnel, I use a lot of long copy for my Facebook ads. So I talk about myself and my business and my mission and my vision and, you know, my brand story. So um, usually use quite long copy for that, um, for especially for cold traffic or top of the funnel traffic. Um, so copy is going to be a, a, a significant piece also of your Facebook advertising. And then, of course, the visual piece. So you have the, the image or the videos. Again, I use a lot of videos. In these examples, um, they're mostly just uh, uh, images, but those are all really good, especially if you're retargeting, which we're going to talk about also um, retargeting um, a little bit, is that if you're if it's the middle of the funnel and you're targeting specific traffic that um, or specific users have already engaged with you, then maybe um, it might be a good idea to just use um, something simple like the shop boom example where you're just using products um, because they've, you know, these users have already engaged with you and know a little bit about your brand. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's uh, you mentioned retargeting. Um, in nutshell, what is retargeting, and how can a business use it? How does it work? Yes, and I love talking about retargeting. I talk about it all the time when it comes to digital marketing. So, what is a retargeting? It's um, it's a, actually a very easy, low hanging fruit method, method to bring users back to your brand. And that could be back to your site or back to your social media. There's different ways of using retargeting. But basically, it's, uh, if anybody's engaged with your brand, maybe they've seen some content on your site, maybe they've seen a blog post or they've seen a video on your Facebook uh, page, um, it's a way to bring them back to the fold because. Anybody who is already engaged with you are more likely to engage further. So they, you know, at that point they already know, like, and trust you probably because they know a little bit about your brand and they've already been to, um, to see some of your marketing material. So um, it, it involves placing a piece of code on your site. So uh, you probably have heard, or our audiences have heard about Facebook pixels, and um, it's just a way again to place a piece of code on your site and then have um, your site and Facebook basically talking to each other, which is what the Facebook pixel is all about. And the types of retargeting out there, there's a few methods, like I mentioned. So you can retarget people who have visited your site. Um, you can, uh, if you have an email list, you can upload your email list into Facebook and it will match those email addresses uh, to active members of Facebook or active users of Facebook and you can retarget your email list, or you can retarget users who have engaged with, let's say, your Facebook video or your page. So let's say if you have a bunch of Facebook videos, I use this all the time, you can uh, specify, I want to retarget users who have seen 10 seconds of my video, 25% of my video, 50, and so on and so forth. So the longer, the, the longer they've engaged with your video, the more likely they are to, you know, to engage further because clearly they were interested in what you had to say um, in your videos. And you can also, uh, retarget pe people who have been to your Facebook page and basically just uh, creating another ad within Facebook and then um, using that audience pool to uh, serve that ad up to them. Awesome. That's a great explanation. Um, again, I mean, there's so many bits and pieces and moving parts to digital marketing. I think uh, Gene, your book is doing a, a great job helping people get organized. How does somebody get a hold of that book? I'll definitely add a link. Um, I'll write a blog post about this uh, this video that we're doing right now. Uh, how does somebody get this book? Well, actually, uh, luckily, I'm giving away my book absolutely for free to anybody who 
uh, any of your audiences. So you can go to winnewcustomers.online, winnewcustomers.online. You can get the book for free. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be a PDF format, so you can download it in, instantly and start reading it right away. Uh, it's not going to be your copy because yours is, uh, is the actual hard copy. Yeah. But um, it's the same concept, the same words, uh, the same concepts in it. So um, if anybody's, uh, whoever's watching here, I would love for you to get a free copy of the book. So win new customers with an S, what customers that online. Awesome. Um, Jean, this, is, this has been great. Thanks so much for sharing your knowledge and insights. Uh, we'll reconnect when I'm back from my trips and all that good stuff. One more last piece of advice for our audience here. You have one more piece of advice for our oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were you were you were gonna give a piece of advice. Yeah. Oh, for me, oh, my piece of advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I always say is, um, if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, um, one piece of advice is to never stop learning. Um, I go through books and podcasts and um, digital courses on a regular basis. I do this actually every day. I'm usually listening to an audio book while I'm walking my dog or doing something at home. So. Absolutely, uh, never stop learning um, because that's really the only way we can all be entrepreneurs. Yeah, knowledge is power. Very cool. Jean, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording here in one second. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, doing this uh, interview with you. Absolutely, right, thank, thank you. you.